What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over the super moves. So, specifically, this is going to be our super move, our ultimate attack, our, basically, use our entire super meter to perform this action. Now, I currently have uh, super meter usage disabled for the super move, so I can test it and so I can show you guys more easily. However, uh, I will show you how to kind of make sure that you have enough super meter, just like we did with X attacks and all that. But today, this is episode one. So what we're going to be going over today is pressing an input or chain of inputs, whatever you want to do, to perform your super move, your ultimate attack. And we're going to cut away. We're going to cut to the character all dramatic. He's going to do a little animation. And then we will return to the regular fight scene and he will do his attack. Uh, I will probably show a reference video of someone from Street Fighter doing this so you can kind of see the reference here. But what we're going to be doing is I'm going to press X, that's my super attack button. Assume that I had full super meter and this wasn't like a dev mode. I'm going to use my super attack, he's going to do his flex, and then he's going to perform his attack. Now that's what we're doing in part one. If that attack lands, we want to continue and do like an automatic combo of some sort. You know, also usually a very cinematic one. But it would be good to know that this is how the animation is going to be triggered, right? So we press the X button, and he goes into his animation, and then he performs his attack. So that animation is like the warning that the super attack is coming. And we would want to block the second player from moving. Currently, he's actually not. So if you see me walk over to him, this guy can actually still do his, his regular stuff. Um... We're going to disable that in the future, but the reason I haven't disabled it yet is because something called time stop. Now that's what I've always referred to it as. That's what I've had it referred to me as uh, when I've been working on projects regarding this. But essentially what it is is whenever a hit lands, time should basically either stop, freeze for a second, something along those lines should occur. Since we're not doing any of that time stop, like frame freeze stuff, I didn't bother freezing the player because technically we're going to actually be doing that when that occurs. So that'll solve that issue of the second player being able to move when that animation is going on. So no worries there. We're just kind of ignoring that for now, knowing that it will be fixed once we get into those kind of mechanics. But... There you go. So, part one, doing your little animation and starting your attack. Part two will be landing the super attack and also going into an automated combo. Okay, let's get into it. So I'll show you the code first, even though I have actually not built this. So I've done this on purpose so that I can show you the super attack without getting full meter every time. If you haven't been following this series, that's okay. We're up to episode 31, though, so we're quite far along. If you're interested in catching up, I will leave a, an iCard in the top right corner that links you to the very first episode of the fighting game series. So if you're interested, you can catch up and get right to where we are right now, and you'll be good to go. Otherwise, if you're just interested in super attacks, that's perfectly fine. Just know that what I'm working off of here is when I press a button, I call start attack functions. So specifically in this case, my X key is bound to start attack four. Theoretically, that will already be made if you've been following the series, but because the series is a little bit freeform, I will show you exactly what's going on here. If you go to your project settings and go to input, then you can see I have attack four P1, if I could find it, which I can't, here we go, is bound to X. So attack one is light, attack two is medium, attack three is heavy, and attack four is my super. With that in mind, you can see that my was super used boolean that I have is going to be set when I call this function. Last thing to note, you can see here player input component. When this button is pressed, attack four P1, which was X, then we call the start attack for function. And that's why this is happening. If you've been following this series, this is the exact same logic that all the other inputs have followed. So 
no reason to worry there. I just wanted to bring it up. It's been a while since we've added a new input for our attacks. So if you didn't add this because you weren't using it, now would be a good time to do so. And lastly, was super used is just a Boolean, just like any other, just so you can see it. Right here. Okay, now that's all we're doing in code. So feel free to leave this if statement out for now, but we're gonna check and see if the super meter amount is greater than or equal to one. I say greater than or equal to just in case for whatever reason, if it's either intended or not. If you get a value greater than one, then you say was super used and you set it to true. Yes, we can use our super now. Otherwise, we're just not gonna do anything. Now, technically you would decrease your super meter amount down to zero here, but I'm actually not gonna do that and you will see why in the next super attack episode in part two. It's not about, there's no issue doing it here, but there's something I wanna do with the super meter that I think you guys will like that I don't want to decrease the value here. I want to do it somewhere else so I can make it a little bit more nice, a little nicer. Okay, but that's all we're doing in code. Nice and simple. The majority of our work is going to be done in blueprints and in the Anim BP. So let's go ahead and go to where we have our animation blueprint. And I had everything open, but the editor actually crashed on me. So let me reopen everything here. The anim BP, and we also want to have the a new camera. So I'm going to show you how to make in a second. Okay, so first things first, let's add in our animation like we always do. Make sure our transitions are good, all that stuff, so we can use our super attack. Longtime viewers of the series will be familiar with this, so. No, no issue there, but I still want to show you kind of the way I set it up so that you can have an idea. First things first, let's look at our animations we have. I have a mutant flexing animation. This is the essentially the beginning of his super. This is his like, okay, I'm going to warn the other player to tell them to try and react because I'm using my super move. So doesn't really matter. You don't need any transition or any notifies on this, at least not right now. This is just going to play beforehand and then afterward we will play our actual attack, which I've called Mutant Super. Now Mutant Super has the three notifies that I always use for attacks, which are started, active, and ended. Started spawns the proximity hitbox to determine if you blocked or if you can do like perfect dodges or something like that, depending on the game. Um, active is when the, the strike hitbox occurs, so when you can actually deal damage to the opponent. And ended is when we're going to return back to idle, or at least when we can reset our booleans and then begin other functionality. So do the same thing that we've always done for all of our attacks. Make three new notifies. You just right click, add notify, new notify, and then it'll ask you to type in a name. Just type in something you know and you're good to go there. Those are my animations. Now in the state machine, I set up two separate states for this and I've specified super slash ultimate for each of these because uh, super, I, I saw some people talking about super and they were referring to what I was calling these X attacks, these, which I was referring to as exceptional attacks. There's a lot of jargon here. Let's not get confused. So these X attacks, these EX attacks I'm using are essentially modified versions of regular attacks that require some usage of your super bar, of your super meter. Now the super ultimate attack is like your big, very cinematic, use the whole meter in one go, those kind of attacks. Just to make sure they're separate, but I, I've made, <laughs> made every single option I could as explicit as possible. Okay, now, all I've done is idle can go to super ultimate start, which is the mutant flex. It's the animation we wanna play when the player presses the button or the input they need. They can go to that just by seeing if was super used. So as usual, grab your mutant character reference, check the Boolean, and if it's true, then we play this animation. 
in this case, I'm going to be doing a little bit different logic than I normally do for the start transition event. I'm going to actually have a new transition called start super transition. This is different because normally when we go from an attack, like if we were to go from idle to medium, we would have start attack transition and any of these would follow the same logic. But specifically for the super move, we want start super transition because this transition event is actually gonna be how I perform logic to move the camera around to do what we want. This is kind of the cue to say, yep, we should change cameras to be our super camera, uh, which is, again, we're gonna make that in a second basically so we know when to modify everything. Now, when we go from super ultimate start to super ultimate, which is the actual attack, by the way, the transition here is just an automatic one. Uh, I've explained this one a lot, but this, this automatic rule based on sequence player and state basically means if there's not another transition to take, when the animation is done, we will go to the next state using this transition. So once that this animation is done, we want to then go to super ultimate, which is our attack. Well, since we're doing that, we want to revert the super camera and essentially go back to the regular camera. So I have something called end super transition. This is just to revert the camera and then it'll perform the same logic as cleaning up unnecessary hitboxes or resetting booleans, things like that. Lastly, and I have this for good measure, and I'll explain why. When we go from super ultimate back to idle, I do my good old automatic rule based. So when the ultimate attack is done, we return to idle, simple enough. But I also do end super transition yet again. The reason I do it here, so if you were to press the super button again, and depending on when you take away your super meter, you could actually trick the game, if you're not careful, into being able to perform like two, three, infinite number of super attacks just based on some logic, um, you know, some loopholes that we have. So to avoid that, it's a little bit repetitive, but if you just add this, when we're going from our super attack back to idle, if you just add the end super transition again, the same thing that we called here, then that will eliminate that issue. Essentially, it's just an extra safeguard. It's saying, okay, even if I pressed it again, when I'm returning to idle, reset everything. So I will have to try and use this from the idle state again, which at that point, your super meter will already be reset and you will be good to go. So you don't have to do this. It depends on how you handle it. But flat out, I said, well, it doesn't hurt anything to reset the variables twice if they're pressing it. If they're pressing buttons during their super move, we don't actually want to do anything. If you do, don't do this part. But if you don't, and I don't think most games have any functionality to perform any other attacks while doing your super, then you can do this. It's safe. You know, maybe it has an extra function call, but it's really not a big deal. All right, and that's all for the, the state machine. The only thing we have to do now is actually assign the hitbox values to our new attack and make the camera. So let's go into our uh, AnimBP event graph. This way we can make our hitboxes and such. Now, I'm not gonna, this is what I'm doing for the, the start super and the end super. I'm not gonna go over these yet. These I will go over last, but here they are. What I wanna show you is that my mutant super attack started which is the anim notify on the animation for the super attack. And mutant super attack ended are the same as always. I just put, plug them into the same exact states that we always do, the same functionality that I do for all my start attacks and all my end attack notifies. Same with active, actually. I plugged it into just the create active hitbox. I just made the damage really high, 0.4. And I also went ahead and made the pushback distance and launch distance pretty darn high. So 2,000 compared to like a normal 40, 20, something along that. And launch distance of 400. Okay. Now that we have our attack set up and we can actually do damage, we have to perform the logic we want to when we press the button, which is to move the camera. So and we could just move the camera. We could just move the camera. And that's actually fine, 
We're going to want to do something similar as we get neater in the toward the end of the series because right now, and I'll play it again to show you, right now it's actually like a snap, right? So when I press the button, it snaps right here. And that's not bad actually. In fact, you probably want that, but a lot of times in games when you're returning from this animation, it's not just a snap back. Usually it's like a, a nice, quick uh, zoom out back to the regular camera spot. Simply because it looks a little bit nicer. You might want this to be just instant because it surprises the other player. Um, doesn't give them any indication. Also because it's, it's instant. Once you press the buttons, it just does it. But if we want to do any sort of zoom out or anything like that, we will handle that later. Don't worry, I've considered it. We're not gonna worry about that now. What we're gonna do is make another camera and we will just kind of toggle between the two. So to make a camera, all you gotta do is add new blueprint class and you can grab a camera. Uh, if you hit all classes, camera, camera actor, here you go. Now for me, I didn't personally do that because all I did was actually duplicate the default camera I already had and deleted everything out of it. It doesn't really make a huge difference. So when I show you the super camera, you'll actually see that the begin play is very, very similar. But I've changed up the event tick and I've also deleted all the other functions. So our default camera, and I'll open it up for you. Our default camera, this is what we made to make sure that both players were on the screen and they couldn't go off the screen. Like they, we put in little camera blockers and such that, that moved as the players moved. But you can see begin play is actually the exact same up to here. And then I removed everything with the camera edges onward. I also removed all this garbage for the field of view. It's not garbage, but it's garbage in terms of our super camera. We don't care about that. And I removed all this stuff for the um, setting the actor location of the camera. Then I've also deleted the set camera boundaries function out of the super camera. Remember, don't do that. Don't delete any of that from your default camera. But out of your super camera that we just made, if you just duplicated the default camera, if you just delete those sections, you'll be good to go. So I'm not going to go over begin play because it's exactly the same, except for what I took out. So let's go over event tick. That way we can uh, kind of set up what we need to have here. Now, right now, this is only going to work for player one because I only set it up for player one. But you can imagine this works the exact same way for player two. And I will set it up for player two in part two. There's kind of a reason I haven't set it up for player two yet. Again, you'll see that when part two comes. It can work the exact same way. I'm gonna do a little something special with it to work for player two. So again, re the reason I didn't get into it just yet. All right, so on tick, we grab our player one reference and check if it's valid. Uh, this is kind of, I don't normally do this is valid anymore after I learned about the convert to validated git. But since I copied this over from the camera, I left it alone. It's perfectly fine. After you see player one is valid, and it's true, what I'm doing is I'm setting the actor transform of this super camera to, well, certain values. What we want to do is focus on the player that is using the super attack. So either player one or player two. In this case, we're just focusing on player one. So if you grab your player one reference, you can drag off of it and type get player or get actor transform. This guy right here. Once you do that, he'll look like this. Now you can right click on his return value to split the struct pin, which shows you what makes up a transform, which is location, rotation, and scale. Then you can click on each of these to split their pins. And you can see that I've now made the box you see above. These are identical now. So I'm gonna delete this bottom one, but that's how you get to how I have this. Now let's go over the logic that I'm thinking here. This set actor transform is for the camera. So you do the similar action of set actor transform right here. And then you go to your transform and you split it and then you split the location and you split the rotation. And again, you can see these nodes are the same. So I'm deleting the bottom one, but that's how you get these two nodes to appear this way. What we wanna do for our new camera 
is set the return value location x divided by 0 0.85 to the new transform location x for our camera. Now, that's weird, right? And the value itself is a bit arbitrary. So let me explain. The value that you put in here will change depending on how far your camera is away from your players, how you want your actual game to look, how you want the cinematic to look. There's, there's a lot of things here, and I'm just kind of playing with values that I thought looked good. So let me give you my thought process. We want to grab the X location of the player. So in, ca in the case of my engine, the way my stages are set up, X is the depth. You see that in the bottom left-hand corner of the U-port there? You see the X? This is the, this is the way it looks. So X is like normally what we would call the Z axis, right? It's the depth, not the length of the width, but the depth. So what I'm doing is zooming the camera in essentially, moving the, not zooming the camera in, I'm essentially moving the camera closer. So if I'm dividing the player's location by 0 0.85 and then giving that to the new transform location, it's literally just taking his location because it's greater than the camera's location and dividing it by 0 0.85 to make it larger so the camera is moving closer to the player. Now, that can be confusing, especially for the first time you're doing this. So if you want, instead of doing a division right off the bat, because you know, it might, you might not know the value you want to use, first of all. And second of all, uh, it might not, like, it might not make sense or mean anything to you to do that. What you can do here is just do a plus, do an add. Just drag off this and do plus. And add points or subtract points. See if the camera is getting closer or farther away. And then determine what location you want. So, for example, if I say, okay, I want to use 0 0.6 instead. Now, when I play the game, you should see I am not as close to the player as you can imagine because I just took away 0.25. So now my zoom is way off from where I want it to be. Okay? So you can easily play around with your camera by just testing that. Now, that's the depth. So just choose a value that you want that gets close enough to your player. I don't have a, a great way of explaining how to do that. Basically, you're just gonna have to take your, your player's location and either add or subtract from it to determine your new camera's location, determine how close or far away you want it. The other thing we have to specifically modify is the Y value. So again, going back to this, the Y value is the length. So the length is, sorry, I went to the wrong page. <laughs> the length is essentially left to right. It's our what we would normally call the x-axis, right? So in this case, we want to just make it so this value is far enough over that our player's centered or whatever we want, right? We want this to look good. So if I leave this at zero, for example, just to show you what this looks like, this is going to grab the the character's Y axis and put the camera right there. But this is way too far to the right, right? Or way too far to the left. The player's too far to the right. So I say, okay, I'll just add an arbitrary value. I happen to, cho to choose 150 because, well, 150 looked good, but I played around with this a lot beforehand. There we go, and that looks, that looks great. But I could also do just the same thing do plus 300 and then it will be really far to the right of the character okay so this is all kind of arbitrary and I bet you're wondering well why do this arbitrarily if you know you're gonna have to do that differently for every stage and things like that so if you're going to have your camera at different distances away from the stage now, I think normally that's considered not good. Um, I think normally the stages are usually, if not the same size, the camera is pretty much always the same distance from the players. If for whatever reason that's not the case, or it's not the same height above the players, or anything like that, what you can do is have a stage modifier, a variable in the level blueprint, 
that you save out and use for things like this. So then you can determine whatever value you have and use the stage modifier to adjust for differences between levels. Okay, so these values you, you put can work in any case. It's not as arbitrary as it seems. You can always have actual math to back it up and be like, yes, I want to keep it at these two values. Lastly, I use the the player's uh, height, the player's what we would normally call Y axis value. So this is Z, but remember, again, Unreal's weird. So you see by default, Z is up and down. It's our height. And I didn't bother modifying that because I thought it actually looked good right off the bat. I just think it's pretty solid. But if you want, just for the sake of being consistent and also just to give you more functionality, you can go ahead and do a plus again. Right under it. Add, you know, 100. And then you can grab different heights for your camera view. Okay. I'm going to, I'll keep it at zero. That way I have it there in case we ever want to modify it for whatever reason. But you can see by doing this, it goes back to normal. Cool. Now, the last thing I did is I actually added a rotation as well. So I'll take this away and show you what it looks like. Oops. So without the rotation, it's honestly not too bad, but it does give us a totally different uh, view than with the rotation, right? I chose to give it a rotation because I like the way it looked when I could see more of the mutant and it focused more on him. And I took that inspiration from watching a uh, super arts video from Street Fighter. So basically, I was trying to mimic their their camera. Because, I mean, obviously their camera is a lot more advanced and I'm not expecting to, to do that right off episode one. But you can see, it makes it a lot more personal. I'm really focusing on this character. Then we return to the scene. Now for this, I didn't do any crazy like, oh, take the rotation of the player and subtract it, anything like that. If you do want to, you'll probably only want to rotate on the Z axis because that's your axis that's going to determine how it rot how he rotates away from the camera or toward the camera. Otherwise, you're going to be rotating him like 90 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, or you're going to be rotating him uh, so his feet <laughs> are away from the camera and his head's close to the camera or vice versa. So you're probably going to want your Z axis if you do it. And you can do the same thing I did with the locations. I just didn't happen to. Uh, lastly, I set the field of view of the camera to be 85 when I did this. It's not a huge difference from 90, but I thought it worked. So just to show you, go ahead and put it like 65. You can see it makes it even more personal. So your field of view basically is a zoom. Actually, I think I might like 65 a little bit more, but either way. This is essentially just, your, it's your field of view, but it basically acts as a zoom. So we were doing this in the default camera already, but with some other math. You can hard code this here. Uh, you can change it depending on the player as well. You know, every everybody's moves are gonna be different when they're using their super, so you might have to actually have a character modifier for these values too. Just a note, this was in the default camera, the camera component but you do need to use the camera component to set the field of view. So you literally need to right click and hit get, or just camera component. And it will come up, here we go, get camera component at the bottom. Just because that's how field of view works. So you can't just do it from your, your camera. So I'm gonna point that out. Okay, so now we have a camera that looks pretty good, but you probably can't test it yet because we haven't spawned it into the scene. So once you got your basic logic here, don't worry about the numbers yet or anything like that, then let's spawn one in the scene and let's get to work. To do that, I'm actually doing it in the Anim BP. 
And I'm doing it in the NMBP because, well, the cam the super camera definitely doesn't matter before the NMBP exists, first of all. Because if no NMBP exists in the scene, then a super camera is not needed. Second, if we create it right in here, we can also grab the reference right in here. So on our begin play, we were setting our mutant character reference. That's it. That's what we were doing on begin play. We're going to add a little bit of logic here, and this is going to allow us to switch between cameras. So whether the mutant character reference succeeds or not on begin play, we still want to do this. So you can see I brought the cast failed to this node, and I've also brought the, the success to this node, because we want to do this regardless. Now, we want to get all actors of class, literally get all actors of class. And then we want to pick the drop down and type in the camera, default camera. Default camera is the camera that we already had made a few episodes back. Then I'm just getting the first index. You can loop through them if you want. Uh, for now, I only have one default camera. I'll probably only ever have one default camera. We might have a few additional cameras in the scene that do different things, but I'm just getting the first index just to end the loop here so I'm not wasting a bunch of time looping. And then I'm setting the default camera reference. This is so I can use it later so that I can uh, switch between view targets. Now, you can either go ahead and make a new variable, hit the little plus variable, and then search for default camera here. And I don't know what happened there, just stop typing, but search for default camera here, and then grab an object reference, or you can just drag off of this and hit promote to variable. It'll make one for you, and he got put in a weird spot, but I'll make one for you, and then you can just rename it. See, it's right down here. I'm gonna delete it, because I don't care about it. I already have one. But that's your default camera reference. Then, last thing we need to do is spawn in our super camera reference and give it the transform of the default camera. You don't have to really do this, but I'm doing it just so it's got somewhere to sit. By default, otherwise, uh, it'll have all zeros for everything, which could, it might be not where your uh, camera or your players actually are set up. So especially if you've moved the stage around when editing it, it will be like under the map or something and you don't want that obviously so just as a little safeguard i drag off of the default camera reference get actor transform right here and then i call spawn actor from class right here and then for your class spawn your new super camera right there drag in the actor transform from the default camera and then set your super camera reference. Same thing as I said before, either set it, make a new variable and set the type, or just drag off of here and hit promote to variable. So now we've set our default camera reference and we've also spawned our super camera. There you go. Then the last thing we need to do is switch between the view targets that we actually want to use. So we want to have a view target for both our super camera and our default camera because sometimes we want to use our default camera and sometimes we want to use our super camera. So in our start super transition, which is this, it's the start transition event when we were going into our little animation before we did our super attack right here. Grab this anim notify, so you just search for the name and it'll be up, uh, it's this one right here, start super transition. And then what I do is I get player controller zero. This doesn't matter because as long as we're only using one super camera, uh, the and both players are gonna be seeing the same camera, the both, they're both seeing the same thing, which they will be, because even if you're not the one using the super, you will be seeing the enemy using the super. So it's okay to do get player controller zero here. Uh, in the future, we'll modify this for multiplayer, but it's not going to hurt anything to have this now. We'll just have to add more to it later. So get player controller zero. And that's just this. Okay. And then grab your super camera reference, which you can just drag and hit get. Once you have these two things, drag off of your player controller and type set view target with blend. 
This is the node I have right here. I'm going to delete it. That's this guy. Lastly, drag in your super camera for your new view target. And what this will do is actually change your camera. Change the camera that you are looking through. So we'll go from the default camera to the super camera. Then I'm also doing something additional here, which is absolutely not necessary. I'm doing it because I thought it looked better for the super attack, but not because it's needed at all. I launch the character when he does the animation, just because I like the way it looked. It gave him a little bit of movement when it switched cameras, and I thought it looked nice. You probably won't even notice it without seeing the other one. But I enjoyed the little bit of flow that it gave. So feel free to play around with doing some stuff here. Uh, but you don't have to. If you want to get the same feeling that I have and play around with it, grab your reference, your mutant character reference, and just type launch character. And then I gave it a value in the Y, because remember, Y in this case is our length. It's essentially our X axis in regular terms. Okay. And this is going to go right into reset variables. The reason I'm doing this, remember this is start super transition. We still want to do everything that start attack transition did for the other attacks. We just also want to do this stuff beforehand. That's why I made a new notify for it. But we still want to go into where start attack transition would go into, which is reset variables. Lastly, we want to do the end super transition, which is this one. The one that returns from the attack to idle and goes from the animation to the actual attack. For this guy, we want to set the camera to the default camera reference. So it's the same exact logic, except we're using our default camera reference instead of our super camera reference. So get player controller zero as the target, but we use our default camera reference as the new view target. And then it also goes into reset variables because end attack transition goes into reset variables. All right, guys, that was a mouthful, but now you should be able to have a successful ultimate attack with a pretty nice looking ultimate. To be honest, I mean, for the time that it took, I feel like it's a pretty successful little attack here. And then once that attack connects next time, we will be able to automatically combo into it and do some sort of other animation. Uh, but for now, that will do. Few notes, because just in case anyone was wondering this. So technically, yes, by doing your spawning here in the AnimBP, you are going to be spawning two super cameras. We will probably end up spawning these cameras outside, like uh, probably somewhere in the game mode for when the level loads up, as opposed to the AnimBP. I added it in here for now. Um, I'll almost definitely be changing it. But don't worry, I, I'm very well aware of that. I just wanted to point it out to you. Uh, I do try not to shove too much into one video because already, like, this one's about 40 minutes, and I didn't touch on a lot of the stuff I wanted to. So <laughs> that's why I gotta split these up, and also it, it can be very hard to follow if I'm jumping between tabs a lot. So some people call me out on that. I appreciate it. Nothing wrong with that, but I am aware of it. Uh, I'm just trying to make it a little bit easier for everybody. All right, guys, so I think that's it. I'm Sean the Bro. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and it helped you, please subscribe. It helps me more than anything else you can do for the channel. I'd really appreciate it. It just lets me know that I'm doing a good job and I'm teaching you, which is what I'm here to do. Next, if you had any issues with this video, or if you can't get your camera in a good place and you want to talk about how you should modify it or what axes to modify it on, then I'd be happy to help out. Feel free to join the Discord. Uh, it's in the description. I can't put an iCard because YouTube doesn't like that. But I'll be happy to help you, and I can send pictures and videos as well. If I can't get to it, someone else in the Discord probably can. So there you go. Lastly, if you'd like to come support us at twitch.tv slash seanthebro27, I'd be happy to have you. Lots of people have been coming from YouTube lately and just letting me know they really love the tutorials and hanging out while I play some Dark Souls and some Resident Evil, and we shut Ashley up once and for all. <laughs> and it's just been a really fun time. So thank you guys, all the support, all the love, and I will see you in the next one. In the next one, we're probably not going to do Ultimate uh, Attacks Part 2. Honestly, we're probably going to do Input Buffers. Because Ultimate Attacks Part 2 is going to take me quite a bit of time. I have to do quite a bit of research on how to do like auto combos and stuff that are scripted. So, 
I will figure it out, but I don't think it'll be for next <laughs> next episode. So just keep an eye out for it, even if you're watching this video in the future, when it's recommending other videos to you, just kind of look for, you might have to search for it if it's, uh, if it's come out. It might not be the next episode in the playlist. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.